Hello guys, welcome to my latest video. In today's video we're gonna learn how to make Counter-Strike maps, specifically Counter-Strike 1.6 maps, but you will also be able to use this knowledge to make Counter-Strike Source maps and Counter-Strike Go maps. If you go to my webpage and go to the Counter-Strike section, here you'll find all the maps that I made along, uh, you know, throughout the years. Um, all these maps, 99% are uh, for Counter-Strike 1.6, but I have um, this little map that is called Aim Nova that it was actually made for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So all these are my creations up to date, and I'm going to show you how to how to make basic maps, all types of maps. Well, we're going to learn how to make um, bomb defuse maps, we're going to learn how to make hostage rescue maps, VIP uh, assassination maps, and also, uh, you know, fight yard or aim maps. So first off, you'll have to know how to configure. First off, all the tools that we're going to use in this video, you also will be you will be able to download it from my webpage. Uh, you just go to the video description and you will have to go to my forum and download the tools. So um, it's very straightforward. First, you obviously want to have your program itself, the, ha the Hammer, the Valve Hammer Editor. This time around, the version that we're going to use is the 3.5, but don't worry if here it says 3.4, but it's actually 3.5. This version is for um, is to make Counter-Strike 1.6 maps. So first, you want to know how to configure the program itself. So the first time you open the program, it's going to tell you to you know to um, configure a, f a few little options. So we're going to go to options. You will have this this little window. We're gonna go into build program. Um, I mean, game configurations. Uh, here, you're gonna type whatever uh, name you want, probably Counter Strike or CS. Now, we're here in game data files, you're gonna go and add. I'm mean, gonna select the F the FGD file, the the one that says Counter Strike 1.6 Expert X. So, uh, and then you're gonna add this other one, which is ZHLT. Um, all these files, obviously, also they're gonna be in the in the little pack that you will be able to download. Then we're going to select this option, the what free, half life. Um, here it's highly recommendable for you to choose Info Player Start, which is the the counter terrorist uh, model, function detail. You will have to select whatever uh, um, you know half life game you have installed. Uh, this program works uh, with whatever version. If you have a pirate version of Counter Strike, or if you have the original Steam version of the Counter Strike. You will have to you you will be able to use this. So uh, for the sake of this tutorial, it's installed in my original folder of uh, of Half Life, in my hash, uh, you know, in the Steam. So you want to select the Steam library, Steam apps, come on, go to Half Life folder in this option. In this option, you have to select whatever um, the mod destination of your Half Life, which is uh, Half Life slash Counter Strike, and the game directory is the same, Half Life ha uh, slash Counter Strike. So all this uh, is configured. We're gonna go into textures now. In the 3D views, you wanna make sure to go with all this crap to, up to the most maximum limit, the model render distance and the back clip in plane also in the maximum. And the textures here, you're gonna select whatever watts you wanna use in your map. It's high. I mean, it, to start making a map, you obviously will have to make to have these three uh, watts which are, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, vital to make your map. And then if you want to add with your own watts, uh, you can add them just by clicking add watt. But these three watts are essential to start. The Counter-Strike watt, the Half-Life watt, and the CHLT. These three files, obviously, you will be able to find them in the, uh, you know, in the pack. But also, these two are going to be located in your game file, you know, in, in your original game. So once you add those files, remember that what files are meant to store all textures, they're just textures uh, packages. So uh, once you have that configured, you just want to click on OK and you will be, be, be ready to go. First, uh, we're going to close the valve hammer. We're going to do a little trick. We're going to go into regedit. Uh, we're going to go into current user, we're going to go to uh, software, we're going to go into Valve, and we're going to go into Valheim and Editor. Here we're going to go into 3D views, and here we're going to go into model distance, and make sure to go to decimal and change it to a very high number. Let's say we're going to change it into 8,000. Um, 8, 
we're gonna click an OK and we're gonna close this crap and we're gonna open the ball hammer once again and now that trick what it essentially did is just um, when you're viewing the map in this program all the models that you place in the map are gonna be visible from a very long distance they're not going to disappear so now let's gonna uh, configure the compiler um, as you may know, once you make the file here in Valhammer, once you make your map, you, wanna, you will be able to, you know, just save it um, perfectly in map uh, in the map um, extension. Uh, but it's just it's not gonna be the BSP, which is the file that um, the game is gonna recognize. It's gonna be the map fi um, extension. So we're gonna convert the map extension in the BSP. Um, to do that, you have to compile the map. So we're going to go into this uh, little program which is called Batch Compiler and here you'll have to configure the, this program as well. So we're going to go to Setup, you're going to um, select uh, the same options that say here and we're going to go to CSG and we're going to go here and you will be able to select from the tool folder the HLCG executable and do the same for all the rest. The BSP, you want to select this VSP executable, the Vs, the Vs executable, and so on. The RAD and the RAD executable, and also we're gonna go to Red Gen, the Red Gen executable, uh, which I have in um, in another. I, I mean, here, and also the you know the Half Life uh, executable here. We're gonna go to refer to your game installation and uh, also the steam uh, the steam executable okay so uh, now then you hand you have to configure all these windows just make sure to pause the video and and copy the same don't worry about this one uh, um, you know copy the same options it's very straightforward you just have to pause the video and copy the same options that I have here uh, so we're gonna go through all these options and that's pretty much it. So once you want to compile the map, you're going to select the map file here and we're going to just type and run and the game is going to be compiled. So now we're going to learn how to make maps. So uh, we're going to go and select uh, whatever um, texture we want to start with. Uh, for sake of this video, we're going to select null which is a texture that is um, recognized by the game as non-existent because it's, it's preferably used to, to make your map more efficient. So we're going to make a little cube here. These are the three types of views. If you don't have them, just go into view and, uh, you know, uh, automatize for views and make sure to select 3D texture polygons to make this preview. I mean, sorry about that. Okay, now, we're going to make a little square. We're going to make sure it's a square. It's not too big because we don't. We want to make a map that it's pretty small, just for the sake of this video. So we're going to hit enter, and you will notice if you go to this 3D camera window, we're going to ty uh, type in Z, and you will be able to control your camera and move with WASD as you were in Counter-Strike. So you could move your mouse to move your view and stuff. And you can see it's a complete solid um, cube. So now we're going to make a room with this. We're going to type C again to unlock from this view. We're going to select it with this selection tool and make sure it's red. We're going to go to tools and do it like uh, we're going to make it hollow with this option. Make it hollow. Um, this is the width of the, of the walls. So we're going to go into make it thinner with 8. And as you can see... Now we're going to navigate inside your cube and it's going to be completely hollow this time. So we can enter the, this, this uh, cube now. Um, now we're going to make sure to texture all this crap. But before doing that, we're going to make um, this room. This is not going to be a room that it's going to be completely dark. So we're going to put some uh, sky here. So we're going to go at south of the cube. We're going to go here, make sure to see the map from the side view. Uh, this is a little trick that is pretty neat. So we're going to select the cut tool here. Um, and we're going to uh, cut the the wall like so. First, make sure to select it. And we're going to cut it like this. 
we're gonna click once again because here you can select whatever cut preference you want if it's selected this way both parts are gonna be conserved if you select this way all the the part from the from the you know from, from the up part of this cube is gonna be eliminated and if you select this this option the bottom part of the cube is gonna be eliminated but we don't want that we just want to um, make a um, division so now um, we're gonna go inside the cube here and you're gonna see that the room itself uh, it's divided as you can see so now we're gonna go and uh, press shift a to make sure to select whatever um, a texture we're gonna we're gonna use, so we're gonna go browse and we're gonna uh, select and type sky. The sky is the sky texture where you once you are in game, you will be able to see the sky. So we're gonna essentially paint the walls like this to put the sky here, sky, 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 and that's gonna be pretty much it. So now we're gonna select our texture for our walls. So we're going to look for a nice uh, wall texture, a uh, very quick, um, a very appropriate wall. Uh, okay. For instance, we're going to select this texture and we're going to click with the right click of the mouse and start, uh, start painting the walls. As you can see, the, the, the textures are not very well fitted. So we're going to select the textures once again and probably he didn't fit but you can see like it, it, it looks like shit so uh, essentially that's that happens because you know the the scale is completely fucked up so uh, we want to um, make sure that the scale stays in one and obviously with Y in one maybe 1.5 it, it will be better or 1.4 you can change you will be able to play with the values here and you will be able to modify this uh, location just by doing this so uh, maybe with four five like this uh, okay like so you want to click in here to center the texture and as you can see now the texture looks better if you compare it with the other one so in order to copy the style of this texture over to these and this and these, you want to select this and um, hold Alt. And once you are holding Alt, you want to click in with uh, Alt and right click on the mouse and the texture is going to be copied. So we're going to do the same. Select the one here with Alt and right click and Alt with right click. So now um, it's more even and it's more uh, it's better to look to the eye so now we're gonna select a, a floor texture for our map um, let's select whatever floor texture that we want here um, I don't want to select whatever shitty texture I I have so let's try and, and use this texture so I, I, it looks pretty convincing to me it looks pretty nice so uh, keep in mind that um, we just use an, an optimization technique before, which is leaving the null texture outside the map. That's most recommendable to because if you use a texture to cover your map from the outside, nobody is gonna be watching that texture, and it actually is gonna um, uh, make your your optimization of the map pretty shitty. So every 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 side of map that is not visible to actual players, it is highly recommendable that you use a null texture. So the map is not, or the game engine is not working uh, over time. So um, also another te optimization technique that is very important, especially if you use a lot of brushes, and by brushes I mean a lot of blocks, uh, you should use um, textures with scale, very high scale. For this, In this case, the scale is 1, and for Y is 1.45. But if you use a higher texture value, the color scale, let's say like three, the map is gonna be more optimized, but the texture is gonna look shittier. So it's like a balance between looking shittier and, um, and more optimized. So you will have yourself to figure that out, which textures and uh, look better for each part of the map. So um, 
so we have basically created the room now you have to uh, put a, some kind of illumination because once you are in this room it's going to be completely dark so we're going to make an, an um we're going to select this tool which is the entity tool and we're going to place uh, this little red uh, i mean green uh, little square probably in the middle of the map or whatever place you want to place it but preferably in top of the ceiling I'm gonna press um, and we're gonna select here in objects and we're gonna go into light if your room is like uh, indoors and it doesn't have any sky uh, you'll have to select light environment I mean light the light is like a single light it's like a lamp but if you are outdoors as we are in this map that we have actually sky you want to select light environment so we're going to type here star and you and as you can see here we have a little square which is the light source it's going to be essentially the sun so we're going to um, modify the properties of this entity by clicking in alt enter so this little window is going to show up and basically here you'll have to modify whatever um, the direction the sun is going to affect your map I highly suggest you to change the angle to 45, <clears throat> which is more realistic. Uh, that's pretty much it. So now we essentially have a room with a with the right illumination. So uh, that's pretty good. So now we're gonna add a player. We're gonna add a uh, you know a police or counter terrorist. We're gonna add an entity also, and we're gonna select the entity properties into um, info player start, which is the this the you know the counter terrorist. We're gonna place him. You wanna type Shift. Uh, I mean Alt A, Alt A, Alt A to make the grid more smaller. Alt A until to the maximum, so you will be able to freely move your objects. Okay, so we're gonna place it right here. We're gonna press Start, and you will you will be able to see the you know the counter terrorist there. Um, we're gonna select the, this dude, and we're gonna place it. You're gonna make sure that all your entities and all your th all your stuff is not uh, converging, it's not cutting out other brushes. Let's say you can place this dude here because it's gonna be stuck, and it's gonna give you errors. So we're gonna make sure to make your your entities inside your map and a little bit floating, as you can see, um, in order in order them not to clip and not to get stuck. So you make sure that every single entity is it has its own little personal space. So uh, we have this player here, it's uh, perfectly well. And if you want to add a, a counter terrorist, just make sure you can duplicate stuff by selecting your crap. And while holding shift, you want to move your mouse. And as you can see, we have duplicated the, the entity. Um, but this time around, we're going to change it into a, into a terrorist. So we're going to go here while you have selected the entity. We're going to go um, into Alt Enter. And we're gonna select the info player dead match, which is, which are the terrorists. So here uh, we have two players, uh, and we're gonna place the terrorist in the other side of the map. Okay, like so. So that's pretty much uh, that's um, that's for that. Now you know how to make a simple room, and now you know how to add players. <clears throat> So, if you want to add more players, you obviously want to uh, make shift and drag the dude here and you'll have another player, another player. Just make sure to make a, a little separation between them. And the more players you add, the more people will be able to join your server or your map. So, yeah, that's basically it. We're going to delete these extra players. just for the sake of this video and now uh, I'm gonna teach you how to make a different type of maps as you may know the most played uh, map types of Counter-Strike are the fuse bomb also hostage rescue and also VIP maps uh, in a lesser extent and also the very popular fight yard and aim maps so we're gonna learn how to make the, all those uh, type of maps now so uh, let's say we're gonna we're gonna start by making a VIP map first. So um, first, as you can, as you may know, VIP maps rely on on the VIP and also the VIP escape uh, escape zone. 
So first you want to make sure to place the escape zone. We're going to make here a little entity here. We're going to um, select the brush type and we're going to select here the trigger. This trigger is going to be invisible inside your game but it's going to trigger different events. So uh, we're going to place the trigger area somewhere around here in front of, the, of these dudes. Just going to make sure that it's uh, facing almost on the ground and we're going to hit enter. So now this uh, little uh, brush is gonna um, is gonna be created, but don't worry because it's gonna be invisible inside your game. So now we're gonna select that brush and go to tools and go to type to entity. And here uh, you wanna make sure to select the Funch Beep Safety Zone. So we're gonna look for that one, and it's obviously gonna be invisible. And we already have the escape route of the VIP ready. So now we're gonna go here, and we're gonna get, and we're gonna add a VIP entity. So we're gonna uh, duplicate this CT. And we're gonna change it into VIP, which is basically info VIP start. So we're gonna select this info info VIP start. So now we are all done. Um, we have our little um, Counter-Strike VIP map, but obviously what's lacking is the ability to buy weapons. So we're gonna add that that shit. So we're gonna make sure to add a, an, another brush with a trigger, and we're gonna make a buy zone for our uh, counter-terrorist dudes here. So make sure to you do a brush, and make sure that the brush is um, like, um, um, you know, uh, surrounding all your counter-terrorist characters, press start, and as you can see, the, the, the brush is completely covering the players. So we're going to select this trigger brush, we're going to um, go to tools and title entity, and obviously select the uh, funk buy zone. So obviously the team is going to be this time the counter-terrorists, and now players will be able to buy uh, the weapons once they are in their starting zone. We're gonna make sure to do the same for the, for these terrorists here, but we're gonna duplicate this. But this time around, we're gonna change it into terrorists. So, function by zone team terrorist. All right, so we're gonna save this map as dot map we're gonna place it inside my map folder with name we can place whatever name we want this for the sake of this video is gonna be named test one and we're gonna save it so now we will be able to test this little map and see if it works so we're gonna minimize this program we're gonna go to the compiler and just select uh, the map file I'm gonna delete this select the map file and hit and run if everything was okay, you should be greeted with a done uh, creating rest file, one file was generated. So we're gonna go into the uh, map folder and here we will be having your your product, which is gonna be the BSP map. We're gonna copy this map and we're gonna go into the Counter-Strike Maps folder. And we're gonna pass it in here and we're gonna test the map if it works. Okay, as you can see, we are the VIP. This should be the VIP escape zone. Counter terrorists win. As you can see, it works perfectly well. Now, let's see if we are able to buy guns. You are the VIP, you can buy guns. We're gonna change the team. Okay, we can change the team because we are a we are a, a CT. Okay, now we are a terrorist. Let's see if we can buy guns. As you can see, we are able to buy guns very well. So this is the map that we can see. 
um, at first in the in the Valhammer program it was a room, but once you added the sky decker, it's, it's actually the sky. Alright, so now let's quit this. And we have successfully created our first map. So now we're going to learn how to make uh, a hostage rescue map. So uh, essentially what you're going to do, we're going to uh, leave these by zones because in hostage rescue maps you also use those. But we're going to change this uh, VIP escape route, we're going to change it into Funk Hostage Rescue. We're going to select this area and we're going to Alt Enter and we're going to change it into Funk host Rescue, Hostage Rescue. So, uh, like this, and this is going to be the place where you have to go with your hostage. And we're going to add a hostage now. So we're going to select the Entity tool, and we're going to place the hostage right here. We're going to place, um, and we're going to select the hostage entity. So we're going to look for that. We're going to press Enter, and here you can see that the hostage has been created. So make sure that a hostage is uh, level on the ground level. And here you can see that we have the hostage. Now the game should be uh, already made for hostage mode. So uh, we're pretty much done. So we're going to save this and we're going to test it if it works. So we're going to compile it. We're going to grab our newly created map. And we're going to pass it inside our Counter-Strike folder. And let's let's see if it works. There you can see the hostage. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Well, let's get the hell out of here. Alright, so that's was, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Okay, so now we're going to learn how to make a bomb diffuse uh, map, which are the most, the, the easiest maps to make uh, in, our, in, in terms of entity placement, but in terms of map planifying, they are uh, the most difficult ones, actually. So, um, now we uh, all you have to do to make a map bomb, a map bomb map, it's just to place the trigger because you don't have to place any hostage, you don't have to place any VIP entity, you only have to place the the bomb areas. So here in the in this uh, large trigger brush, you want to change it, and we're gonna change it into Funk Bomb Target. So we're gonna look for that the function Bomb Target. Obviously, all the bomb maps have two different bomb sites. So once you make your map, you you will be able to add uh, two different uh, bomb zones. But for the sake of this video, it's gonna be just one. So um, now the map should be already done. It's very easy. Uh, we're gonna compile the map and let's see if it works. We're gonna select a, a terrorist. We're gonna take our map. We're gonna place it inside our Counter-Strike Folger. Oh, fuck. Okay. Now let's see if it works. Okay, now we are terrorists. We're gonna plant the bomb. There, as you can see, the map was perfectly uh, it was working perfectly well. So, uh, and now for the more complicated uh, type of map, we're gonna learn how to make a fight yard or aim map, uh, which are those map that you maps that you have weapons uh, all over the place or you have all the weapons already keeping yourself. So we're gonna delete the buy zones. We're actually not gonna delete it because. Even though in maps like uh, Fi or A maps you can't buy weapons, but the the buy weapon areas are actually present in there. Just they are um, they are hidden inside the map. So you obviously will have to we we we're gonna need these these um, these zones 
So we're gonna make it really small. We're gonna make it really small. And once you have these really small buying areas, we're gonna make it like a little square. You're gonna make sure that these buying areas are not accessible by any player. So we're gonna make sure to to put in uh, on top of the map like this. So nobody's gonna be able to buy any weapon inside the game because the buying zones are gonna be inaccessible for regular players. So as you can see, the buying zones are uh, you know uh, hanging over there. So um, that's pretty much it. Okay, so now we're gonna do a, is create a point entity and select armory entity. So we're gonna make a, this. We're gonna place the new entity also floating in the sky. But this time around, it's going to be the Armory Entity. Select Enter. We're going to select the Armory Entity. Oh, these are going to be the weapons lying on the floor. So we're going to make sure that these weapons are actually near the players. As you can see. So now we're going to type Alt Enter. And here you'll be able to select whatever weapon you want there. Let's say it's an M4. We're going to duplicate this. And this time around we're going to select Night Cave, for example. So, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, now you'll have two weapons lying on the floor. Um, which is, uh, you know, essentially the main idea of a fight your map. All right, so that's pretty much. Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna test it out. We're gonna save it and we're gonna test it out. We're gonna compile this map. As you can see, if we if we press B, we won't be able to buy any get any weapons. Okay, so we have successfully made a a, fee, a fight yard map. Also, if you want if you don't want your players to start with with a pistol, you just wanted to start with knives. I want to make sure to make another entity here. I'm going to make another entity. I'm going to place it here. But this time around, we're going to select um, the entity game player equip. All right, so. In the game player equip, you also want to make sure to place it whatever play in whatever part you want in the map. I highly suggest you that you place it uh, near other entities that are floating. Give knife, yes, um, but none of the pistols are gonna be selected. No, no, no. You can also select if you do, if you want them to start with any type of you know grenade, uh, with Kevlar, with you know the ballistic helmet, yes, and. Uh, any type of, of ammo, of ammunition for your weapons. Uh, here you can see the weapons, each weapon, which type of ammunition they use. So uh, let's say you want to test, uh, pick the M4. It's nine, it's 5.56 five, caliber. So we're going to select this. And um, this is going to fill your M4. So now we're going to sa uh, save it and see if the map works. So now basically what we are doing here is just making the the fly yard uh, more restricted because players won't be able to buy weapons or they won't be able to use any pistol but they will start with uh, you know Kevlar best and also they will start with full ammunition. So let's see if that works. 
As you can see, we have started with the knife, no pistol whatsoever. And as you can see in the ammo, we have we are full ammo. But the AK, we are not full ammo because we didn't uh, put in an AK ammunition. So basically now you know how to make Counter-Strike, all the types of uh, Counter-Strike maps, very simplistic in a very, very fast uh, tutorial. So uh, yeah, basically that's, that's, um, that's the first part of the video. Now you know how to make all the different types of maps. Um, now we're going to learn some tricks. First, I'm going to teach you how to make textures. So as you can notice in the, in the initial part of the video, you, you saw that we were able to go to textures and you, were, you uh, just uh, selected the different WAT files uh, to make the map. Because otherwise, if you don't have any WAT files, you won't have any texture to work with. But let's say you want to you you add your own textures, right? So we're going to create our own WADs. So uh, we're going to close this, we're going to create our own WADs with this little program called Wally. -E. And um, we're going to go here into File, we're going to New, and we're going to select Half-Life Package. Because you have um, all types of, 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 of WADs, but this time around we're going to use Half-Life Package. Make sure to do that and select OK. So um, let's say we're going to add a texture here, we're going to go uh, into uh, Google Images and we're going to uh, look for any simple texture here just make sure that the texture is seamless we're gonna select this texture and we're gonna select a texture for some walls so we're gonna look for a rock or a stone okay some uh, stone texture we're gonna go with something like this okay so we have those two textures downloaded but now we have we will have to convert them so first uh, Counter-Strike uh, basically uses and uh, I mean the Wally -E, this little program uses um, certain size of textures you you just can't place any type of size of texture so we're gonna I'm gonna teach you which um, sizes you'll have to use so um, the smaller textures the most recommendable textures are gonna be 64 by 64 then we're gonna go into 128 128 to 56 by 256 and 512 by 512 I highly suggest you that you don't exceed those uh, dimensions but you can actually fix and um, you know you can uh, mix these uh, little sizes to make horizontal textures not only square textures such as I don't know probably 256 by 64 that's a viable option as well. So you can mix this as long as you stay with these numbers. So um, we're going to go and open the Photoshop program in order to make changes of our photos, of our images. So we're going to create and open this uh, grass texture. We're going to make sure that the size is correct. As you can see, the size is currently very big. So we're going to change it into probably 256 by 256. Uh, maybe 128 by 128 okay so now we have this texture um, now we're gonna make it uh, mode make sure to go into index color and once you do that you just want to save it as a BMP file 8-bit and there we will have the texture already created so we're gonna make the same for this brick texture here we're gonna go into into image size we're gonna change it into 128 by 128 all right so we have the texture here we're gonna go into image mode index color okay and we're gonna save it as BMP and uh, make sure it's 8-bit okay so now we have the, those two textures converted and now we'll be able to use these textures in our game. So we're going to open the Wally, -E and we're going to drag these two textures here. And uh, we're going to go and File and Save As. And we're going to select whatever name we want. Um, let's say Test 
wad. Okay, so we have the wad here already created. We're gonna cut it and we're gonna go into Valhammer uh, Folger and we're gonna place it from, uh, you know, whatever you want. But for the sake of this video, I wanna place this wad inside the root folder of the, um, uh, inside the root folder. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna go into tools, options. We're gonna go into textures and we're gonna add a wad and, and we're gonna add the wad that we just created that, that it was uh, this test wad. We're gonna click and apply, and uh, another little detail I want to, we want to use is uh, go to edit. Uh, I mean map map properties. Make sure that the max viewable distance is very high, probably eighty thousand. And we're gonna go into environment map. We're gonna place a different sky here. In order to make it a different sky, we're gonna go into Counter Strike Folder. Uh, Counter Strike Folder. All right, so we're gonna go to the Counter Strike folder here. We're gonna go into GVX and uh, the M folder, and here we have all type of of skies. You can obviously download more skies from the internet, but you will identify a lot of maps, a lot of skies here. So let's say we're gonna place place this blue sky here. Let's see how it looks. Looks pretty good. So make sure that uh, just notice that the blue sky here. Uh, let's select another one. I don't like that. Uh, yeah, whatever. So make sure that the blue sky here, it says blue elf. Uh, I mean, we're going to just sort it by name. Okay. As you can notice, it says blue back, blue down, blue left, blue, I don't know, whatever. All kind of directions. But just make sure to select the name, the first name, without the, the, the two letters. So basically, the name of the map is blue. Then the name of the sky is blue. Don't select the whole the whole name of the of the file. Just select the the name, the initial name without the coordinates. So this this sky is named blue, and this sky is named Back Halley, and this sky is named CD One. So do you feel me? So we're gonna pass these um, the name of the sky here blue, and we're gonna close it. So yeah, um, now we're going to uh, save the map, we're going to close the program, we're going to open up the, the program again, we're going to open the map. Every time you import a WAD, just make sure that um, you close the program and open it again because the what textures are going to be loaded next time you open the program. So we're going to use the, the textures that we just created. So we're going to open Shift A. And um, we're going to select here texture group. We're going to go in test what. So it only shows the textures that we have created. We're going to select the grass map, the grass texture, and we're going to uh, place it with the right click. And here you can see the, the texture that we just created is implemented. And we're going to use also the brick texture. Just make sure to uh, remember to maintain Alt key plus right uh, mouse. Select the texture and do Alt right mouse. Alright, so... <laughs> So now the textures are imported and we're ready to go. So that's uh, one of the tricks that I wanted you guys to teach you. Let's see if the map works very well. We're going to test it. We're going to compile it. You can delete these textures. And let's see if the map works. Okay, come on. Okay, we're going to open the Counter-Strike game once again. All right, so we're going to test the map here. And as you can see, the sky has changed. 
and the textures has have changed as well. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna quit. <laughs> All right, so now um, let's uh, we're gonna learn how to place models. Um, we're gonna go into your Counter Strike Forger once again, and if you notice that in the Counter Strike folder you have a folder named Models, and here all kind of models you will be able to to see if you just open them. Uh, I have a special program installed which is Jets Half-Life Model Viewer and here you'll be able to see all sorts of models depending on what maps you have installed in your Counter-Strike folder. I highly suggest you to visit a very good web page where you can find a lot of all sorts of models which is uh, game la gamer slash lav dot com here we able to, you will be able to find all sorts of models um, and you will have to select whatever model fits your map uh, it, it has all kind of models. It's a very good web page. So uh, let's say you want to create a map uh, with models. So we're going to go into model folder and we're going to create a new folder just for our map. We're just going to name, I don't know, test. And here inside your test folder or inside your map folder, you want to uh, wanna place whatever models you will use inside your map. So let's say we're going to use this, um, let's see. This bush, uh, this uh, little chick. Okay, so if you want to use the chick model, you can place your model inside your folder. So now we have the test folder inside your model folder. So now we're going to implement that little model inside our map. So we're going to place the model. In order to place models, you have to select the Entity Tool again, but this time around, we're going to select the Cycler Sprite. So, um, once we are here, we're going to place, just make sure to do the grid smaller, with Alt-A. And um, we're going to place, oh shit, we're going to place this. Oh my god, okay, here. We're going to make sure to place the model here. We're going to type Alt Enter and we're going to select Model Sprite and select this uh, model that we just um, want to use and close it. And as you can see, we have imported the model here into our map. Uh, make sure, just keep in mind that models in the Gold Source engine are not very welcome because the Gold Source engine is quite a fucker with models. So there is a high chance that your models won't show up inside the game. Maybe you can see them inside your Valhammer program, but once you are inside the game itself, the models won't really show up. That's because either two possibilities. One possibility is because your model is, is placed in the wrong plane. That, and by wrong plane, I mean that the model is not completely free. Let's say the, that the model is here. It's like void buried inside your, uh, you know, beneath the ground, that's probably going to make the model not show up inside the game. And the other possibility is that you have a lot of a lot of models inside your map, making, um, because, you're, you know, the engine has a certain limit of models. If you place a lot of models, the engine is not going to load some of the models. So make sure to place models to make your map pretty, but not be excessive. Not not place a lot of models because the engine is gonna you know it's gonna be saturated. So um, <clears throat> let's say we're gonna make the model and we just place the model. If you are inside the game, the model is gonna be completely passable. If you if you walk right uh, in front of the on the, of this model, you will be able to pass through it just as if it if it, if it was uh, a ghost. So you wanna make sure that the model is solid. So in order to make solid models, it's very simple to do. Just it's kind of tricky, but it's very simple. We're gonna make a brush here with whatever uh, texture we want. Um, just make sure it's a texture, and we're gonna completely cover your newly created model with this texture. 
just like that. All right, so we're gonna click and enter, and as you can see, we have created a block on top of our model. So now um, we had to make a little trick here. Um, we're gonna make um, make sure that it's it's tied to an entity. We're gonna go into tools, tied to entity, and we're gonna make sure it's function wall. And once you have select the function wall, we're gonna go render mode additive, and uh, we're gonna make uh, fx amount into one. Make sure it's one, and light flag opaque block light. Okay, so now inside inside your program is it's gonna look like shit, but inside your game, inside your real gameplay, uh, in, it, the model is gonna be solid. So that's uh, that's that for the model. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Then we gonna place. Um, I don't know how to what to teach you next. There are a lot of stuff. Um, <clears throat> let's place. <clears throat> sorry about that. Let's place invisible walls now. We're gonna make an invisible cube that players won't be able to walk through it. So we're gonna place this. We're gonna put it like this. This is very simple. Um, we're gonna make a very huge block here. We're gonna click and start and we're gonna select this crab again and we're gonna type shift A and we're gonna select the clip texture. So with this little trick, um, I don't know, oh yeah, I'm stupid. Just make sure to all textures are selectable. And now clip. With this little trick, what it actually does is uh, uh, making walls that are invisible to the eye, but they are um, they will let bullets go through. So there's not they're not gonna be solid solid walls. Uh, so if you shoot through them, the bullets are gonna actually go through them, but players won't be able to walk through them. So that's what the clipping texture does. So yeah, uh, we're gonna compile this little example and let's see if it works. Let's see if the model has been solidified and let's see if the walls are clipped. So let's compile the map and let's test our progress. Okay, as you can see, the, the this block was completely solid, but we were able to shoot through them, and this uh, little chicken was uh, completely solid. Uh, but the you know the 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 bullets weren't able to penetrate it. So that's a little example of how to do invisible walls, but uh, making per permeable per permeable walls or unpermeable walls. So uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. Now, uh, let's see another example. Uh, also, another way to make um, walls that one lead bullet through them, we're gonna make another wall here. I know this video is gonna be long, very, very long, but it's good to show you guys how this program works. <laughs> Okay, so if you want to make a wall that it's that it won't be able to let your bullets through, as well as making a textured example as a chicken, you can make another way. You can make that that shit, but in another way. You want to select invisible, the invisible texture, clicking start in enter, and here you will have a wall with an invisible texture. So this texture, what it essentially does, it's the same. 
um, but let's let's uh, tie it to an entity. That the entity is going to be func wall, and basically uh, render mode solid. So we're going to test if the wall is actually solid and if it lets the the bullets go through. the impact is mitigated um, the wall is being recognized it's being solid if we throw the weapon it's gonna bounce and the wall is successfully placed so yeah uh, if you want if you don't want the the you know the bullets to penetrate you'll have to make this wall a little bit thicker so that's pretty much for this example so now you know how to make invisible walls uh, how to place models as well. Um, let's see. So now let's gonna learn how to make uh, uh, ladders. Okay, so let's say we wanna make a ladder, just make a brush. We're gonna select the ladder, any ladder texture we wanna place. And uh, we're gonna make this, we're gonna make this. Okay, let's make it a little smaller, uh, a little thinner, like that. We're going to place it here. Uh, okay. We're going to learn how to make ladders now. And uh, we're also going to make it a little bit taller, just like that. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to just click in OK. center so now we can fix the texture itself and as you can see the texture ha has blue into it that that means that every blue color is going to be considered as a transparent if you're going to go into your wally uh, we open whatever wall we want just to show you a little example here if you just type rename you will identify these little uh, symbols that are uh, present. If you want to make it transparent, a texture that has transparency, make sure to have this little um, uh, symbol uh, below it. If you want to make it water texture, just put an exclamation mark, and so on and so on. So, uh, basically, this texture, as you can identify, the name has this symbol, meaning that it's going to have to be transparent in some way or another. So inside the game, the ladder is going to be transparent, all the parts that are blue. So now, uh, this is just a brush texture, it's not going to work as a ladder. So to make it work as a ladder, just make sure to make another brush. We're going to select this, we're going to make a clone, we're going to duplicate it with shift. But we're going to change the texture here with trigger apply and now you can see they have the ladder texture and the ladder brush and the trigger brush and the trigger brush is very 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 near the the ladder brush so we're gonna tie these to an entity which is gonna be the the ladder entity Okay, so it's ladder. Obviously, you want to make it to make it visible. Yes. And that's it. And now we're going to make a little um, a little pond. So, uh, to show you how, how to make water. So, we're going to make uh, a little pool here. With whatever texture you want. Probably this. We're going to make something like this. A little square. 
I'm going to make a little pool. Just to show you guys how to make a little pool. Uh, okay. Just like this. Okay, cool. Enter. We're going to make it hollow. We're going to use this tool to uh, group select it. Okay. Okay, so here we have our little little stuff here. We're going to make another brush to make the water. We're going to select the water, whatever texture water texture you want. And voila, here we have a little pool. Now, um, you can you can select the water uh, block, the water block, and tie it to a function, tools, tie to entity, and you can have two different uh, different uh, options. You can tie it to the funk water. And here you will be able to um, to select whatever um, you know variables you want for your water to be. The FX amount is this is opaque, and the the less number is going to be more transparent. So let's say we're going to make it like one one twenty. It's going to be like in the middle of transparency, and also you can change the waves. You can have it to have waves, um, the speed, all the stuff. So, um, once you make this little pool, you can also make the water with another function, which is going to be illusionary. And in the illusionary, you can change it into water and the FX amount into 120. And we're going to create, okay, so we're going to test the ladder and going to taste the water. Okay, as you can see, we were able to create some water and create a ladder. Okay. Alright, so we are almost done here. We have learned how to do a lot of stuff. Um, probably this is going to be the end of the video. It's just long as it is. And next time in the next part of the, uh, in the next video, we're going to learn some extra details. But this is essentially enough to make your first Counter-Strike map. So see you next time. In the next part of the video, we're going to learn some um, subtle details. How to, how to use sprites, how to place background music, how to place teleporters, and how to make vehicles. Um, so yeah. See you in the next see you in the next video.